Hey, this is Leslie Samuel here from Interactive Biology and the Anatomy and Physiology Academy. And we had a question in the Facebook group and some of the questions I find it's just easier to just record a quick video to answer. But this question was from Brittany and she was asking me to explain the concept of resistance when it comes to blood flow. And that's a great question. Uh, it's a very important concept to understand when it comes to the circulatory system. When I think about resistance, the first thing I like to th um, think about is a hose. Like, okay, so here we have a garden hose and you probably know how this functions. You hook it up to a, a faucet or something of the... What do you call it? Is it a faucet? Anyhow, you hook it up to something that um, allows for water to flow. <laughs> and it goes through this hose and it comes out on the other end. Uh, in some cases, you have um, this nozzle that you can kind of press. But in other cases, it's just the hose. The goal is to get that water from where it's starting to the end so that you can water your plants or water, uh, wash your car or something of that sort. The key thing is you have fluid that's flowing through this hose to get to a specific location. Now, there are going to be a number of things that are going to influence how the water travels through this hose. Um, if this hose is very, very narrow, the space, the, the lumen or the opening, if it's a very narrow opening, um, there's going to be more resistance because as the water is just, you know, flowing through the hose, the water is going to be bumping up against the sides, bumping up against other water molecules and all that kind of stuff. And it, there's going to be some of that resistance just because of the fact that you have something flowing through a, 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 a tube and it's going to encounter friction. All right. Um, now, so if it's narrower, it's going to um, have more resistance. It's not going to be as easy for you to get as much through. If it's wider, of course, there's going to be less resistance. If you have a huge hose, if the diameter of this hose is something like this in comparison to this, you're going to have much more water that can flow through it. There's going to be significantly less resistance. Now, let's look at it a different way. Oops, sorry about that. Let's go back to that slide. Let's look at it a different way. Let's say this is the um, lumen or the opening of the hose, or this is the diameter of the hose. Let's say it gets a little clogged because you have some stuff that builds up in it, some kind of gunk. Um, is there going to be more or less resistance? There's going to be more resistance, right? You, it's going to be harder to get the same amount of fluid through because it's clogged. This is the same type of concept that I want you to understand when it comes to the way that blood is flowing through the body. So you have the heart that's beating. Of course, it's sending um, blood to the lungs. It's sending blood to the arms and to the legs and to the kidneys and to uh, all of the structures in the body that need blood. But these are just like these garden hoses. These are tubes and as the blood is flowing through the tubes, it's going to be hitting against the wall. It's going to be hitting against other red blood cells and white blood cells and all that stuff. It's going to be encountering resistance. Now, just like there were factors that's going to influence this, um, the flow of water through this hose, there are also going to be factors that are going to influence the flow of water through these blood vessels. If the blood vessels get narrower, there's going to be more resistance. If it's wider, there's going to be less resistance. And this is something that the body uses, the body compensates, so that if you're trying to get a lot of blood to a particular area, but not to others, you're going to take advantage of the processes of vasoconstriction, vasoconstriction, and vasodilation, vasoconstriction and vasodilation. Um, so in vasoconstriction, you're constricting the blood vessels to make them narrower because you have um, smooth muscle that's surrounding those that can constrict and cause the, 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 the lumen to be narrower. Or you can dilate. Um, you can have the muscles relax so that, okay, so this might be um, vasoconstriction and 
this is vasodilation and you can kind of channel it to make it go to the places that you want it to go um, and this is something that the body does regularly to get blood to where it needs to go and not as much to where it doesn't need as much when you're much more active there's going to be vasodilation going to the um, the blood vessels that are going to the muscles um, those need to dilate and the blood vessels that are going to your stomach for example those are going to constrict so you're not getting as much um, a blood flow Going there. So here we're going to have a higher resistance and I'm actually going to call it peripheral resistance, peripheral resistance. And here you're going to have a lower peripheral resistance. All right. So we're modulating this. We're trying to take advantage of the fact that, I mean, if all your blood vessels were to just vasodilate, then the blood would just kind of pool to the lower extremities. You don't want that. You want to take advantage of vasoconstriction and vasodilation. But the main concept of resistance has to do with the fact that as the blood is flowing through the vessels, it is going to be encountering friction. It is going to be encountering resistance. I hope this answers your question, Brittany. Um, and uh, I think I'm going to do more of these to answer questions as they come in and as they are necessary. Um, so that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.